Okay, it has arrived. Um, can anyone guess? I mean, you can tell by the shape. Let's do a little quick unboxing here. Scratchy, we got something. It's here. Say something to the camera. Yeah? Okay, where were we before we were interrupted? We were doing a quick unboxing, I think. It's my second battery. Whoa, this thing is heavy. Holy cow. sure they sent the correct one it should be a 52 volt uh, 19 amp hours maybe on the battery itself yep here it is 52 volts 19.2 amp hours so the battery I chose seems to be the most popular uh, among the Facebook uh, aerial rider groups. It's the unit, unit pack power. This one is 52 volts, 19.2 uh, amperage hours. I got a pretty good deal on it. Um, it was somewhere around 320, something like that. Um, with shipping, they the thing about this brand is they do have a warehouse here in California and one in Texas. So believe it or not, this, this, this battery came within two days. It was at my doorstep. So what's in the box? Um, came with the base, pl base plate, of course. It's already on the bike. Uh, this XT60 connector, I don't think I'll be using that. I bought my own male to female, um, four of those comes with a charger of course it's tucked away somewhere um, and that's it keys set of keys so I already skipped ahead as you guys can see I attached the uh, base plate of the battery to the down tube I took off my seat which was really easy it was just you know one nut in the front two in the back um, and I also labeled all the wiring just for future reference, just in case I need to, you know, open it up again and uh, change something. I don't know. You never know. Um, also, I attached the uh, XTC XT60 connectors. I bought a total of four. Right now, I only uh, plugged in two. I'm not quite sure yet um, how I'm gonna line up, line this up with the frame. I might tuck it under, um, you know, somehow conceal it, goes up. I might need another one, so a total of three. But I would recommend getting at least three or four. These are really cheap, Amazon, um, $8 for a pair, I think. And then once I'm all done with that, I am going to use a spiral cable wrap. So one thing I'm using and highly recommend is this tape. It's called Teza tape. It's high heat resistant and chemical resistant. It uh, adheres to itself so it doesn't have that sticky residue like electrical tape. Um, I use this on anything, everything electrical on this Jeep right here. I have a lot of auxiliary lighting. I have a winch, uh, front and rear dash cams, and I use this stuff for everything. All right, it has arrived. I know I said earlier it was a battery blender. No, I was mistaken. It was the, uh, it's a FBC fusion battery combiner. It serves as the, it's pretty much the same thing as a battery blender. Um, oh, I didn't know it was made in the USA. The reason why I went with the uh, fusion battery combiner was first of all, it was, it was in stock and it was so much cheaper than the battery blender from Sparks. Um, Theirs was like $200, well, it was $150 with uh, $50 shipping. This thing cost, theirs cost $50 to ship. This one was $88. So the instructions for this are, looks pretty simple. Um, 
two batteries and the controller in the center. Let's see, operating instructions, um, voltage range 12 volts to 100, less than 0.25 volts drop, may get warm during use, uh, allow airflow, yep, knew all that. This uh, FBC battery fusion combiner is uh, pretty interesting. Has a heat sink on it. I'm um, not quite sure where I'm going to mount it, but it says to allow airflow, so it's probably going to be sitting right there. That's a good spot. So I know in this video I never went over how a fusion battery combiner actually works. There's a video online, um, a guy goes into great detail, a lot of information on how it actually works. So it's on YouTube, just uh, search up Fusion Battery Combiner. And the same thing with the battery, battery blender, there's someone on, there's a few videos out there that goes into great detail. Okay, I received the Fusion uh, Combiner and time for the install. So, if I'm wondering, how do we know what what plug, what connector goes into where. So what I did first was I traced the wire from the original battery. Right over here, over here, this was connected to here. Um, and then this splits, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it splits into two, into both controllers. And it also had another wire attached to it. And this was attached to this right there. This one attached to that one. And that was for, that's for the brake light. So I just attached, detached both of them. And then here's the uh, combiner. The controller goes into the center. So the one that splits into two will go into here and then the battery number one battery number two that's it easy right okay so I'm somewhat done um, I just decided to run the line just straight up um, I tried lining them up against the frames here but I didn't, it didn't look right okay I'm about 90% uh, done. As you can tell, I blacked out my battery. I wiped off, uh, actually I scratched off the UPP power lettering on here. The other side as well. I lined it up just straight across and up. And as far as the uh, Fusion battery combiner, it says to um, mount it at a spot where there's good airflow. So I'm probably going to zip tie it somewhere up here. Oh, as, as you can see, it works. I'm gonna test drive it later though. But um, 56, 56.3, it's not fully charged. But as you can see, watch when I flip off the battery, it changes to 53, so it's using the, the rear battery. So I'm all done, I'm charging both batteries. Um, there we go. Next video will be on the performance, so stay tuned.